Now that we've looked at doing hypothesis tests for proportions, we're now going to turn our focus to hypothesis tests for means when sigma of the population is known, which of course is the population standard deviation. One of the most important numbers that we get in running a hypothesis test is our test statistic. And when we're testing for means, uh, the z value that we use, and we can use the z because we know the population standard deviation uh, is with this formula. And this should look familiar to you. Here we're comparing our population, our sample value to our assumed population value, which is what we find in our hypotheses, our null and alternative hypothesis. We divide that by uh, sigma, which is the standard deviation of the population, and then over the square root of n as well. Um, now, in entering this into your calculators, you're going to want to always put parentheses around the top numbers and parentheses around the denominator quotient. Um, this will give you the correct test statistic value, and I label this here with the TS so that we can discern between the critical value when we're using a critical value approach and the Z value that we get from our test statistic because they're both Z values. Now when we run these uh, for means, the approach is basically the same and we're first going to look at this from a critical value standpoint. And of course we are simplifying uh, these steps because we are assuming that we know the standard deviation of the population. Uh, but first we're going to establish the null and the alternative. Remember that the null will always be an equal to and the alternative will be either be a not equal to, a less than, or a greater than, depending on the wording of the question. Secondly, we're going to determine the critical values for the given level of significance, alpha. And sometimes we're given the confidence level and we just need to keep in mind that alpha and the confidence level are complements of each other. They're both the same side of, or they're two sides of the same coin. Uh, you know, if one is 95, then the other is always 5. If one is 90, the other is always 10. The significance level is the area in our tails, and the confidence level is the area in the fail to reject region. Then we draw a normal curve and we label it with our critical values. This is critical, uh, no pun intended there, um, because we want to see visually before we even do our test what the bar is that we need to surpass uh, with our test statistics. So we want to label that out first. Then we gather our data and we determine the value of our test statistic Z and then we draw a conclusion based on where that value of the test statistic falls on our graph, uh, comparing it to the critical value. So we're first going to look at the critical value approach here. Um, here is our example. A computer program designer has developed an online questionnaire she believes will take an average time of 15 minutes to complete. Suppose she samples 35 volunteers and finds the mean time to take the test is 14 minutes. Assuming the population standard deviation is 2.5, determine if there is sufficient evidence to conclude the completion time of the online questionnaire differs from its intended duration. So for our hypotheses, we first know the null is what uh, is currently believed. And she designed the test to take 15 minutes. So we, we know the null is that the mean test time is 15 minutes. What we're trying to do uh, determine is that whether it differs from this. So from this 15 minutes, the difference doesn't really take us to the left or to the right. Uh, if it's 16, it's different. And if it's 14 or 13, it's different as well. So the second is uh, 15 minutes not equal to. Okay. Notice that on our sample, we know because it's written in the question here that it took 14 minutes. Um, but that's not how we determine our uh, sign here in the alternative. We want to look at the wording of the question, not the results of the sample. So second, uh, we determine the critical values for an alpha level of 0 0.05. Uh, we know this is a two-tailed test because of the not equal to symbol. And so as we draw this out, we want to put two sides 
uh, there because it's a two-tailed test we're gonna have two critical values and for a 0 0.05 level significance um, our critical values will be positive and negative 1.96 so we go ahead and write that on our graph as well now we go ahead and we determine the value of the test statistic we've set this up so that we know where it is we need to go in order to reject uh, the rejection regions are always your tail region or regions in this case so here's our Z formula for our test statistic uh, we know that 14 minutes did come out less than what we thought but we don't know if that's significantly different and the Z value is what's going to tell us that so we subtract 14 from 15 or I'm sorry we subtract 15 from 14 we divide by 2.5 over the square root of 35 uh, and we get negative 2.37. Make sure on your calculators you're able to get the same number. It's good to practice with these uh, uh, examples that I'm giving you so you know how to enter these correctly once you get to the questions on your homework. So parentheses around the top, don't forget about that. And parentheses also, this is the part where people forget about, on the bottom quotient as you're entering it. And the answer we get is negative 2.37 of course falls way to the left of uh, one, negative 1.96 so we're beyond our critical value uh, that tells us that according to the significance level we set up that our uh, sample data differed enough for us to for us to, for us to consider it being uh, significantly different so our conclusion is to reject the null we're in the rejection region the critical region so we reject the null and we say there is sufficient evidence to conclude, and here I'm just restating the alternative hypothesis, that the average time differs from the assumed 15 minutes. Remember that we always talk in terms of rejecting or failing to reject the null, and then we describe the evidence supporting or not supporting uh, the alternative. We reject the null, there's sufficient evidence to support the alternative, we fail to reject the null, we say there's insufficient evidence to uh, reject, or I'm sorry, insufficient evidence to support the alternative. All right, when we do a p-value approach, uh, we do it the same, the steps are basically the same as we did previously, um, but with the p-value approach, we have slightly different steps than the critical value approach. Uh, we first always state the null and alternative hypothesis looking at the wording of the question. We set up the hypothesis by choosing and stating our level of significance. And then we go right to gathering data and calculating our test statistic. Um, and once we found that test statistic, we compare it to the significance level and we draw a conclusion based on the above comparison. However, we're trying to get a p-value, a probability value, that is less than our significance level. And um, you may want to go back and review the theory behind the p-value, uh, which is in the 12-1 section. Uh, but these are the basic steps in doing a hypothesis test with this. All right, so here's another example for us. Wikipedia, free online encyclopedia, reports that in 2006, the average American woman is 25 years of age at her first marriage. A researcher claims that for women in California, this estimate is too low. Surveying 213 newlywed women in California gave a mean of 25.4 years. We also assume this population standard deviation from previous studies is 2.3 years. Using a 95% confidence level, determine if the data supports the researchers claims so first we want to look at our hypotheses we know that the status quo assumption is that the mean age for women nationwide is 25 years of age uh, the researcher believes that this is too low therefore she wants to prove that the mu is actually greater than 25 years uh, so we have our uh, normal curve set up and we calculate our test statistic. The p 
p-value we know will fall to the right. Now where this p-value is, we don't know until we've found that test statistic value. Uh, so we plug this in, again, x-bar, my sample value, minus 25, which is going to be my uh, mean of the population, assumed mean at this point. The sigma is 2.3, and the size of the sample is 213. So we plug all these values in, remembering to put parentheses around the top and parentheses around the denominator value. And we get 2.54. So that means that our sample that we got from our population um, was 2.54 years more than what we expected. Or the zero here represents 25 years and this 2.54 is uh, what we're what it what the z value is for 25.4 years and it's a total coincidence here <laughs> I know it looks crazy but it's a total coincidence that that decimal just got moved over uh, that just happened to be how the numbers worked out in this case uh, there's no real connection there so if we look up 2.54 using our calculators and normal CDF, we see that the p-value, which is the area to the right of 2.54, is 0 0.0055. We compare that to our significance level, which was 5%. Remember, this qu quoted here was 95% confidence level. Well, 95% confidence goes with a 5% significance and our value is definitely, definitely less than that. So therefore, we conclude that again, we're going to reject the null hypothesis in this case. Uh, this value did prove to be extreme enough so that the area to its right, the probability that we would land where we did or somewhere more extreme is only uh, it's less than one percent it's point zero 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 five five or point five five percent which is less than five percent so we say there's significant ev evidence at the five percent level significance to suggest that the average age of newlywed women in California is larger than the national average let's look at another example using the p-value approach and remember, this is the probability that given our uh, assumption of the value of the, the mean of the population, that we would end up where we did or somewhere more extreme. So a recent study showed that the average number of children in Europe is 1.48. Global Watch Group claims that German women have an average fertility rate which is different from the rest of Europe. To test our claim, they surveyed 128 German women and found that they have an average fertility rate of 1.39 children. Assuming a population standard deviation is 0.84 from previous studies, does the data suggest that the claim made by the Global Watch Group at the 90% level of confidence is correct or incorrect? Okay, so um, for this, uh, we assume for that status quo, which is our null hypothesis, that the mean number of children in, in Germany is not going to be different than the rest of Europe, but rather that the mean of Germany, German women, is the same, 1.48. The alternative is based on the wording of the question, and here they just want us to find uh, that, uh, well, let's see, where's our claim here? A global watch group claims that German women have an average fertility rate which is different from the rest of Europe. So they're not saying it's less than or greater than, they're just saying different. Of course, it appears that it's different, right? 1.39, in fact, it appears that it's less than, but because the word different was used up here, we just uh, go with not equal to, which means it's going to be a two-tailed test. All right, we're gonna look for the p-value um, our value of 1.39 is definitely less than 1.48. 1.48 would be here in the middle. And that, of course, goes to a zero in terms of the z value. And so 1.38 is less than that. It would be over here. And what we're after is the actual z value uh, to the left of that. But then we're going to double it 
because we're doing a two-tailed test. So whatever this area turns out to be, we're going to take the positive z value and add in the area to its right to find our pi final p value for this problem. So again, we run our test statistic. We take that 1.39, we plug it in there for my sample data, compare it to the 1.48 uh, via subtraction, and then divide it by these two numbers. Enter those into your calculator, and you should get negative 1.21. If you're not getting that, check your parentheses. Remember that the bottom needs to have it and the top also. The top uh, difference needs to have it. So we have negative uh, uh, 1.21. And uh, the p-value, the area to its left, if we use normal CDF on our calculators, is 0 0.1131, which is also going to be the same as the area to the right of positive 1.21. So we double that number, giving us our p-value of 0.2262. And at the 90% level of confidence, that leads to, uh, this is definitely larger than that. And so we fail to reject the null hypothesis in this case. Uh, we would say there's insufficient evidence to conclude that the fertility rate in Germany is different from the European average. So again, we're failing to reject the null here, which tells us there is insufficient evidence to support the alternative. This concludes our examples for modules 12.3 when we are doing uh, hypothesis tests when sigma is known, which means we can use the z value comfortably in running our test.